Precious saints of God, this is the outpouring for your uplifting, for your refreshing, for your edification. Today on the outpouring I have with me, he's no stranger to this set, uh, <laughs> Pastor Leroy Burke. And uh, he has been around for quite a while, but we have not heard from him very recent, very recently. But he is in Tobago this weekend and so I took the opportunity to have him on set uh, so that he can speak to us about something that God has really been put placing as a burden on his heart for the body of Christ. Today we are going to be speaking about freedom from strongholds and um, the truth be told Many, 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 many of us, including pastors, lay people, people at different levels in ministry, have challenges with strongholds. So I want you to lay aside all that you're doing, get out your notepad and your pencil, and open up yourself for what God has in store for you. Pastor Burke, welcome. Praise God. Thank you, Minister Marva. And it's my joy to be here again. You know, each, every time I have, I have an opportunity to share the Word of God, I always take advantage of it. Amen. Because as members of the body, we need to strengthen one another, enlighten one another, bring thoughts, bring knowledge, so that we could be lifted from glory to, to glory. glory. Amen. I know the Holy Spirit will bless a lot of our hearers today because this subject, as we would normally say, is fresh from the oven. Fresh <laughs> from heaven's the throne oven. room. Amen. Fresh from the throne room. And it has to do with freedom from the bondage of strongholds in the areas of prayer, praise, worship and the manifest glory of God. I was surprised when the Holy Spirit started bringing these revelations to me about strongholds in the lives of leaders, pastors, bishops, and members of the congregation. Because you know, down to the years when we talk about strongholds, we, we, we refer to strongholds in unsaved people the man who is unfaithful to his wife, the man who is born by alcohol, prostitution, a lot of things. But it is a fact, because it's coming from the Holy Spirit, that one of Satan's most powerful weapons against the people of God lies in the area of strongholds, in the area of prayer, praise, worship, and the manifest glory of God. Pastor, could you, for the benefit of those who may be viewing today's program, could you define a little bit when you say strongholds, exactly what is a stronghold? That's an intelligent question. <laughs> and I want to take my time and, as we would normally say, mash it up, <laughs> bisect it, so that we can understand not just only the seriousness of it, but how it's affecting people. A stronghold is anything which influences and controls your desire for continuous building up of yourselves in prayer, praise, worship, the manifest, uh, the manifest glory of God, or even in other areas of your personal life. Let me just go with it again. A stronghold is anything, anything that influences and controls your desire. Because our desire is very, very important with respect to how far we go with God. As a matter of fact, we are told in the book of Proverbs, it says, hope deferred 
maketh the heart sick. But when the desire, it didn't say when a desire cometh, but it says when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. Your desire and mine determines where we go. If somebody wants to be a doctor, you can declare it from sunrise to sunset. I want to be a, a, a doctor. The desire is there, but then that desire has to take you somewhere. So a stronghold is anything. And I wish, uh, I wish our listeners will really get into this. It's anything that influences and controls your desire for continuous building up of yourselves in prayer, praise, worship, and the manifest glory of God. Mm. Strongholds. Satan's powerful weapon lies in that area today. Maybe many believers are not aware that the devil knows about worship, you know. Yeah, he was a worshiper. He was the worshiper in heaven, the lead worshiper. Not only that, mm. but according to the book of Ezekiel, when God made him, he made him with built-in musical instruments in him. Remember, he was called the bright and the morning star. He was next to God. He, knew, he came from a place where he saw the glory of God, where he saw God. He came from a place where everything that relates to eternity, heaven, he was there. So coming to earth now, he knows exactly what affects him. And that's why we need to teach people how they need to pray intelligently, teach people how to praise, how to clearly define praise, how to translate praise, how to relate to praise, how to define it, so that we could move from praise into worship and from worship into the glory of God. But we want to stress a little bit on the first point, the area of prayer. And what might be some, some of the strongholds that different people could experience? Because I know you said it could be anything. Say, for example, I probably love my computer or, you know, online. Could that now become a stronghold and a hindrance to my prayer life? Definitely so. Like I said before in the, in, in the understanding, anything that controls and influences your desire, anything... Anything that poses a threat to your prayer life that hinders that deeply rooted desire from reaching out to the things of God, from growing from strength to strength and from glory to glory, anything that affects your desire and begins to control your thought life, control your mind, and brings you to the point now where you become an actual victim to it. Mm. That's a stronghold. Mm. Anything you don't master will master you. Will master you. Mm. And when you get to that place where strongholds begin to master you, you're in trouble. Would you believe I'm in ministry now about 53 years? And I've served in almost any capacity you could think of at the highest level. I've been a pastor to pastors, a, a, a director of large, a divisional superintendent. So I'm saying that so that you can understand that I've been around in the circle where there is hardly anything that you would tell me about that I haven't seen or heard. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I have observed down through the years that strongholds have been built up. But at that time, I wasn't aware that there were strongholds. You know, we, 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 we refer to them as problems <laughs> and challenges. But when the Holy Spirit started opening up the reservoirs of revelations, then I began to realize, listen, 
This thing is so bad and it is so serious. It's affecting the establishing of the sovereignty of God in the church and in the nation. Strongholds. It could be anything that masters you. Anything that controls you from increasing your relationship with God. Anything. There's a scripture that says anything that we give ourselves to completely becomes we are now a slave to that, to that thing. So that, that's how strongholds operate. Precisely so. Now, let me share with you the danger of this. And I hope you people that are listening will take this message very, very, very seriously. Disobedience is the birthing place for strongholds. Disobedience to prayer, not committing yourself continuously to prayer, is the birthing place for strongholds. For example, let us assume for five years or ten years you are being disobedient to the Holy Spirit in committing yourself to that time of prayer. That's five or ten years of an accumulation of disobedience. Now you think you are serving God for 20 years, like some ministers in ministry for 30 years, 40 years, with weak prayer lives. Mother, that's an accumulation of disobedience that has been for all of these years opening doors for the enemy to build strongholds. But the thing about it is, he doesn't come in like that. He uses legitimate things. And if you're a pastor out there, let me just give you a little word of encouragement. The enemy uses legitimate things to bring down pastors from a healthy relationship with God. It's not sin that they're committing, but the hours they spend studying to prepare messages. The hours they spend in visiting and counseling. The devil uses legitimate things to weaken, to weaken them. And when these things, after a number of years, are accumulated, as we would normally say very slowly, the demons tighten the screw, so to speak until he gets you to the place where he realizes, but look, you have relaxed now. So when you miss your prayer, no, no big, big deal. deal. No big God. deal. <laughs> you are comfortable. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. But yet, you're praying your way. You're preaching. You're teaching. Now, some refreshings of the anointing sometimes brings us to the place where we feel about great things are happening. But the fact of the matter is, prayerlessness is worse than AIDS or cancer. And whenever a minister stands in the pulpit, year after year, year after year, and you're releasing from a dry spirit within you, you are releasing these things onto the people. And it affects them. And that's why it's so important that we take the word of God very, very seriously where our prayer lives are concerned. Because you can be in ministry for 50 years, my mm -hmm. And it could be 50 years of building up strongholds. I would like to use Pastor Booth, the example of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, throughout all the Gospels, we see where Jesus would probably go through the night in prayer or he would get up early, mm -hmm. you know, before it, while it was yet dark and mm -hmm. go off on the mountain mm -hmm. to pray. There were times when he would separate himself and go off to pray. And uh, he kept, uh, it was a, a continuation throughout his ministry. Mm -hmm. And each day now, during the day, he was able to function, the miracles, the signs, the wonders. 
But Jesus himself never even took that for granted because he went back at the end of each night and early in the morning to commune with the Father. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's really craziness if we expect to serve God without God. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we need to understand is not only understand, but believe it. And it must be deeply rooted in us. Strongholds are associated to a demon of inconsistency. Because inconsistency opens the door for the enemy to build strongholds. When you look at the life of Jesus, he was faced with not only with challenges, Jesus was faced with onslaughters attacks. He was flesh, God man. But the thing about it is, Jesus from the very inception of his coming to earth declared, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. The will of the Father not only included going to the cross, it not only included the suffering, the will of the Father included discipline in himself, defeating the demon of inconsistency. Because Jesus could have had strongholds built in him by preaching all day, healing the sick, getting tired, sleeping wherever he slept, waking up in the morning, back to healing the sick. Remember, he was subject, he was flesh. You would remember that when Satan came to him in the wilderness and the devil offered him the kingdoms of the world. Do you know the devil, at that time, he was exercising his rights? Simply because Adam had sold everything, in fact, given everything up to the devil. Now, Jesus is our example. And if he is our example, then we must all pursue what he did. The whole idea of prayer, intelligent prayer, using the authority of God's word, the knowledge that he brings to us. When we become consistent in defeating that demon of inconsistency, we are able to to bisect strongholds, maneuver them, rise above them, and close doors to the enemy. Jesus is our example. And the whole idea of prayer, he doesn't mind if we go to church 24 hours a day. He doesn't mind if we sing all day. But when it comes to prayer, Jesus is the example. As you said, he got up very, very early in the morning and went out a great while before day. Very often in scripture, according to scripture, Jesus had his own all night prayer meetings. And this is what we need to get back to because it is sad to note The whole idea of strongholds, you know, it's affecting leadership badly, badly. I talk to some of my friends, and the nature of the conversation is of such way I have to limit what I'm saying, simply because they don't grasp it in their spirits. They hear it. They listen to it. But because of years and years of disobedience. The spirit's not sensitive. Ah, that's it. Hmm. That's it. And that sensitivity, sensitivity in our spirit mm -hmm. only comes about by us spending time with the Lord. Eh? Spending time in prayer. You know, that you, you develop us. And knowing that you don't even, you can't even explain how you know, but you just know. And that, that's the sensitivity. 
You know, the Holy Spirit has a way of depositing a hunger and a thirst in you when your desire is focused in his direction. Now you'd be surprised to know how attraction, how attractive a desire can be. We don't always do things right. One day the Holy Spirit told me, he said, you know, I don't hear the prayer of everybody. Then I asked, Lord, well, how do they get their answers? He said, I answer them because of their desire. My desire, your desire, is like the catalyst. It's a foundation on which we build a relationship with God. So when it comes to prayer, that small desire you have must be enlarged. And the only way it can be enlarged is when you pursue God. And I'm not ashamed to tell my fellow ministers and other believers, we need to get back to the principles the apostles and our forefathers have laid down with respect to the manifest glory of God, with respect to prayer, praise, and worship. Prayer is the answer. Now, I know you may hear people make remarks concerning knowledge and all of the things. Of course, knowledge is important. Mm -hmm. The Bible makes it very clear. My people perish because of, lack because of, of a lack of knowledge. So therefore, intelligent praying has to be based on knowledge. There is no way God could take you to a place that you have never desired, so to speak, you know. If you don't want it, he's not going to put you down your throat. He opens the door. That's why he asks us, to, he said, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So yes. it's a hunger. We must remain in a hungry place for more of the things of God. Yeah. I mean, how, how many meals do we eat for the day? <laughs> Three and more. Three and counting. And not only that, but an abundance of food. Yes. Eh? Physical, physical every body. day, mm -hmm. every day, there has to be a time of refreshing in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how God's kitchen is always smelling good. <laughs> That's a and nice way food. of putting it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the fragrance mm -hmm. of the meal. Oh, the nutritional aspect of it. I wonder if we are talking to some people today. And there are strongholds in your life. Strongholds with respect to prayerlessness. Maybe some of you have been struggling for weeks, maybe years. And you have never allowed the Holy Spirit the opportunity to break forth or break through, so to speak, in your will, in your mind, in your thinking so that oh, he can flow through you. And he wants to. Listen, anything that you allow, don't blame the devil for it. God is calling on his people to return to the place of prayer. And if you have been experiencing these strongholds, if you admit the truth, and you cry unto God, he will set you free. If you're a pastor, a bishop, an apostle, a prophet, and you have been involved in the manifestation of gifts, not because you are spiritual, but because the gifts, they make room for the man, I'm asking you, rethink your position with God. I read some statistics recently, Marva, and I was talking to what you'd call a senior bishop. And he said, more than 99% of leaders don't pray for more than 30 minutes. 
So the spiritually malnutrition <laughs> and the nourished. It's a serious, mm -hmm. it's a serious mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Now you have to take into consideration that mm -hmm. here we are dealing with principalities, powers, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Plus as a leader, you're a, maybe a husband or a wife, you're a family person, you have a secular job, and you're ministering to people that when they walk through those doors, they walk through doors with all kinds of problems. Can you afford to have strongholds in your life and be praying for about 30 minutes? Pastor Burke, I mean, you're, you're touching a serious nerve there, and I think we need to do a, a second recording uh, on this same topic because, you know, we're out of time for this okay. program, you know. But um, what I'd like to, before we close up, I'd like to let the viewers know that you are in, Pastor Burke is in Tobago, the third weekend of every month, uh, and that will be from Friday the 18th p.m. Saturday morning he's in the prayer garden at Otley Street and Sunday he is available for prayer and counseling the numbers that would come up on the screen you can feel free to call these numbers for further information and as we close this program Pastor Bill could you just pray how much we have probably just about a minute left could you just pray yes. for those who are viewing Father, in the name of Jesus, I am asking you to quicken your word through thine spirit to those brethren that have strongholds and give them understanding, Father, and bless them with deliverance and cause this message today to awaken within them a desire for freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Viewers, this has been the outpouring for your upliftment and for your advancement. Shalom.